Hello, in this video I will tell you how we can transition to a Scala ecosystem where we can reliably detect conflicts in transitive dependencies. I will start by explaining what are conflicts in transitive dependencies and why they are currently hard to handle. Then I will show you how the community can solve this problem. First, by using a well-specified versioning scheme named Early Semver, and second, by automatically checking that our libraries effectively follow this versioning scheme. Finally, I will show you how to do that in practice. So this video primarily targets library maintainers. Let's get started. Consider a killer application, which is an HTTP service that uses a Postgres database. It uses Akai HTTP to implement the server and Duby to communicate with the database and also Circe to work with JSON. So the dependency graph looks like this, and it's nice to see that both Akai HTTP and Duby uh, seamlessly integrate with Circe. Unfortunately, it turns out that both versions of Akai HTTP and Duby depend on different versions of Circe. It's O11 O here and O13 O here. Is this a problem? Actually, we don't know yet without more information. Worst case is that both versions of Circe are not binary compatible, and you will discover that at runtime only, with an exception like a no such method error. However, we can't draw any conclusions just by looking at these numbers, because we don't know what their meaning is with regards to the binary interface of the library. They are just arbitrary numbers. We have recently published an article about this problem, which I encourage you to read if you are interested. You can find the link in the description of the video. At the Scala Center, we think we can solve this problem by giving a precise meaning to version numbers. When we have a version made of three numbers, major, minor, and patch, what does it mean to bump the major number? And what does it mean to bump the minor number? So here is our recommendation. You should signal that you broke binary compatibility by incrementing the major number. Similarly, you should signal that you broke source compatibility by incrementing the minor number. This versioning scheme is named early semver because it's a variation of semantic versioning. Once we agree on the meaning of the version numbers, build tools can leverage this knowledge to draw reliable conclusions when they resolve transitive dependencies. In our first example, they would conclude that the two versions of Circe are incompatible with each other, so it would be reported as an error. Unfortunately, it's not easy for us, humans, to know whether a change we did in a library broke source compatibility or not. And it's even more difficult to know whether we broke binary compatibility or not, because it requires understanding how our Scala code is translated into JVM bytecode. That's why we built a tool to automatically check whether our changes broke source compatibility or binary compatibility. I will show you how to use it in a second. To conclude this introduction, here is how we can move towards a more reliable ecosystem of Scala libraries. We need all the developers to declare the versioning schemes they use. We recommend using early semver, but build tools like SBT also support other versioning schemes. The point is to declare the versioning scheme that you use. In case you use early semver, we recommend you to use a plugin, SBT version policy, to automatically check that your library actually follows that versioning scheme. Now, I want to convince you that it is easy to follow the recommended versioning scheme by using the plugin SBT version policy. For the purpose of the demo, let's say that I write a library for working with JSON. Let's name it JSONlib. And let's say that there is another lib, HTTP lib, which depends on my JSONlib, and another one 
PostgreSLib, which depends also on JSONLib. So that we can reproduce this scenario where a killer app depends on two libraries that themselves depend on different versions of a third library. So here is my JSON library. It's very simple, it contains just an AST, but I'm happy with this first version and I want to publish it. So the first thing I should do is to declare which versioning scheme I use. The manual way to do that is by setting this build version scheme to be some early semver because I'm going to use the recommended versioning scheme. And this information is included in the artifact metadata when I publish a release so that it can be used by downstream build tools, for instance. But in this demo, I'm going to use SBT version policy, as you can see in my file plugins.sbt. And this plugin automatically declares the versioning scheme for me. So I can just remove this line. Now to publish the first release of my library, there is nothing special to do. I just set the version to be 1.0.0, or it could be 0.1.0, and then I publish the library. In this demo, I do that by running the task publish local. Good. Just after I've published my release, I need to define what is my intention for the next release. Is this going to be a patch release, a feature release, or a major release? Each type of release comes with different compatibility guarantees. So let's say that for now, I want the next release to be a patch release. A patch release must be both backward binary compatible and backward source compatible with the previous release. So I declare my intention by setting version policy intention to be compatibility binary and source compatible. I also need to bump the version number because the plugin SBT version policy uses the current value of the version key in SBT to compute the previous version of the library so that it can compare the binary interface of the current version of the library with the binary interface of the previous version of the library. So since the next release will be a patch release, the version number will be 101. In practice, you may want to use an SBT plugin that manages the version for you, such as SBT Dinver, which automatically computes the version of the project according to the git status. So if I was using SBT Dinver here, I would not set the version because it would be set automatically by SBT Dinver with a value like 100 plus some number of commits minus some commit hash, like that. And such a value would also work with the plugin SBT version policy. But here I'm setting the version manually, so it's 101. Okay, so now I work on my JSON library, and let's say that at some point I want to introduce a new method, um, concat, on the type obj to concatenate two JSON objects. So it's uh, def concat that takes a parameter of type obj and returns another obj which contains the properties of this object and that object. Perfect. Is this change backward binary compatible? Is it backward source compatible? To not have to deal with this question every time I work on my library, what I should do is to systematically run the task version policy check, for instance, in my continuous integration server. If I run it now, it tells me that the change breaks source compatibility. So if this method was added in a pull request, the CI would have failed because the change violates 
the compatibility guarantee that we want to uh, provide for the next release. So we would typically leave the pull request aside and only when we would be willing to do a feature release, we would come back to it. So let's say that it's now time to work on the next feature release. Or let's say that we are now in a Git branch that contains the next feature release. A feature release must be backward binary compatible, but it can break source compatibility. So we set our, int our intention to be compatibility.binary compatible, like here. And now if I run the task version policy check, it succeeds. Good, so let's say that I now want to cut the release. Before I do that, I must run the task version check to check that I didn't make any mistake in my version setting. Here it tells me that I should bump the minor version number since I'm doing a feature release. So you should typically run the task version check in your release pipeline just before you run the publish task. Let's fix, uh, let's fix the version number to be 110. And now version check succeeds. So I can cut the release by running publish local. And immediately after, I set my intention for the next release. Let's say it will be a feature release again. So I leave the value of the key version policy intention to be compatibility.binary compatible. And I also bump the version number to be 1.2.0. For the sake of illustration, let's say that at some point, I decide to remove this, this uh, concat method here. Is this change backward binary compatible? Again, instead of guessing, we, we can just ask SBT version policy by running the task uh, version policy check. And it tells us that the change breaks the backward comp binary compatibility. So we can only release this change in a new major version of the library, according to the recommended versioning scheme. So let's say that we want to do that now. So I change the intention to be compatibility.none. And I change the version number to be 0 0.20.0. And now version policy uh, version policy check succeeds and version check succeeds so I can publish version 200 of the library. So in summary, the process is the following. First, declare your intention for the next release by setting the key version policy intention to the corresponding level of compatibility. Also set the next version accordingly. In your CI, or before merging any change, make sure that the task version policy check succeeds. And just before you cut a release, make sure that the task version check succeeds. And if it does not, just fix the version number accordingly. And the cycle repeats. Declare your intention for the next release and so on. Let's now have a look at a killer app that transitively depends on two incompatible versions of a library. So I'm now in the build of this killer app. Starting from version 1.5.0, SBT takes into account the versioning scheme of your library dependencies and it reports an error in case of conflicts. So here, it fails to resolve the project dependencies because uh, JSONlib, which uses the versioning scheme early semver, is used by PostgreSlib in version 2.0 and also by HTTPLib in version 1.0 and both versions are incompatible according to the versioning scheme early semver. That's it! I hope I convinced you of the benefits of declaring the versioning scheme of your libraries and also that Following the recommended versioning scheme, early semver is easy to achieve with the plugin SBT version policy. Thanks for watching.